So tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we got to talk about your president, Joe Biden, the man that a lot of you ran out there to vote for. Now he did something that's all in the news right now. And I know a lot of people that voted for Biden are happy about this because this is what they voted for. So clearly they're happy about what Biden has just done. But before we get into, you know, the meat of all of this, let's play a video when he was president elect talking to the civil rights bootlicks. And I want you to hear exactly what he, let's just revisit this for a second because it makes sense what we're going to talk about tonight. So let's go ahead and roll that. The country is doomed. It is doomed, not just because of African Americans, but because by 20, 40. This country is going to be minority white European. You hear me? Minority white European. And you guys are going to have to start working more with Hispanics who make up a larger portion of the population than y'all do in terms of raw numbers. The last thing that Biden said at the end is what we need to focus on and pay attention to. That black people going to have to start working with the Hispanics because they make up a larger portion of the population than y'all do by raw numbers. So let's just hold it right there. Now, remember last night we talked about the insidious plan by the corporations through the politicians, the corporations always never paid for labor because we were the free labor for 250 years. After that, we were reduced labor because they weren't paying uh, us like they would pay the white people, right? So now you fast forward always to 2023. This country's foundation has always been cheap labor. Corporations should always making massive profits, not paying much at all for people working for them. So I told you after the Citizens United decision, what corporations can give to your politicians, that's the one where you really lost your politicians because now they don't have to do nothing for you. So your Walmarts, your Amazon, your Target, uh, your Tesla, your, all the people like that can give money to both sides. And that's what a uh, smart people do like the Koch brothers. They give to Democrats and Republicans. So it don't matter what side win they win. You know what I'm saying? They cool with losing money. They fine with it when they go win. So then they, that politician got to do what the corporations want. What does the corporation want? Cheap labor. How are you going to get the cheap labor? Latin America and anybody else that's coming through the Southern border. So with that in mind, let's get, get into what Biden has done and which a lot of you should be happy about because you voted for this. They say the Biden administration on Wednesday offered nearly half a million Venezuelan migrants in the U S the ability to live and work in the country legally. So Biden just made a half a million people legal. So you cannot call them illegal. They are legal to be here. Let's continue. Let's say approving a long standing request from cities struggling to house asylum seekers. So those of you in Chicago, you just got more people in it that's going to be looking for jobs with you. New York, same thing. Remember what I said earlier, they're going to, and yesterday they're going to lay you off or let you go for any little reason and hire them because they don't have to pay them anything. It's like they would have to pay you. Remember, this is your politicians doing this. This is your politicians. Don't get caught up in going after the, the, the immigrant because that would be the silly thing when you're not going after the politician, the Democrats is the one that's causing that problem. They say the department of Homeland security expanded or redesignated the temporary protected status program for Venezuelan migrants, allowing recent arrivals to apply for de deportation protections and work permits offered by the policy. And as they previously only Venezuelans who arrived in the U S before March, 2021 qualified for TPS, a program created by Congress in 1990 to offer a temporary safe haven to migrants coming from countries facing humanitarian crisis, such as an armed conflict or a natural disaster. So these people are here legally folks. You can't say they're illegal. Not at least not the Venezuelan people. They have given TP. Anybody who have TPS is legal to be here so they can work. They can get a driver's license. They can get a place to stay. They can get all of that. 
At the stroke of a pen, Biden brought in half a million people. At the stroke of a pen, he could make every person in this country right now who don't have legal status to be here, he could make it right now where all of them would have legal status to be here. He can do it. Oh, yes, he can. Now, by redesignated Venezuela's TPS program, the U.S. is rendering the record number of Venezuelans who have reached the U.S. over the past two years eligible for status. An estimated 472,000 additional Venezuelans are expected to qualify for TPS, which has already allowed about 242,000 migrants from that country to obtain the status according to DHS figures. Venezuelans who reached the U.S. after the end of July will not qualify for TPS. Why? You letting them all in. So he's just about made oh, oh, well over almost what, three quarter of a million people, almost or so, legal. That's three quarter of a million people that got to get places to stay, jobs, food, all kinds of things these people have to get. And now they can do it. They didn't, they didn't come in and get it the right way. They came in just to say, I'm a bum rush the border. I'm going to violate federal law and look, they're getting rewarded for violating federal law, but let you or me violate federal law. They got a federal prison waiting on us. Black folk can't even sneeze wrong and we going to jail, but they violated federal law because it's against the law just to come over here the way they come over. They don't, uh, they don't apply for certain things. They just say, I'm just gonna bum rush the border. I'm gonna turn myself in and say, I'm here for asylum. That's the game. They go bum rush the border and say, I'm here for asylum. And then they let them in the country. Biden has been bust Biden too. Not just they put it all on Greg Abbott and the Republicans. No, 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 no. Many people have said that Biden and them in the middle of the night, take migrants on buses and dropping them off in cities too. It's not just Abbott. Abbott is getting a bad rap for it, but Biden has been doing it too. Only at night though, when, when all y'all asleep, he's moving these people all over the country. So you're not paying attention to it. Now temporary protective status provides individuals already present in the United States with protection from removal when the conditions in their home country prevent their safe return as Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said in a statement, he said, that is the situation that Venezuelans who arrive here on or before July 31 of this year find themselves in. While others without legal status, he said, will also qualify for TPS. The announcement will mostly benefit the more than 400,000 Venezuelan migrants who have trekked to the U S Southern border over the past two and a half years as part of the massive exodus from the South American country. In recent years, more than 7 million Venezuelans, as they have fled economic calamity and authoritarian, most of them reselling in other South American nations, such as Colombia, which that should be placed. They all should be going marking the largest refugee crisis ever recorded ever in the Western hemisphere. Increasingly more Venezuelans have left Venezuela or other countries in search of better economic opportunities in the U S embarking on a week's long journey that entails crossing Panama's once impenetrable Darren gap on foot. It's the administration's announcement is an important victory for congressional Democrats and leaders in large cities like New York who have for months have been pressuring the federal government to grant migrants in their communities, legal status so they can work legally more quickly and not rely on local services. So something I, I've been paying attention to, and, and I want you just to look at the news. You do know there are black people all in Latin America. You know that, right? There are black people, more black people are in Latin America than they are here in the United States. Have you noticed the people that's coming over don't look like Celia Cruz? That's something I keep noticing. When black people are coming across the border, I'm noticing they're Africans, they're Caribbean, but they're not Afro Latinos. I notice. And I was wondering like, why is that? Why aren't they coming? So it leaves me with two theories. One, these people are telling the truth because black folks are making it the best way they can in their country. Or number two, 
it is really true what they're saying was going on in their country. But the United States told them, don't you let them black folks come over here because we know Biden has proven they don't want black folk here. We go back to the Haitians, like what they did to them. Biden put them on a plane and got they behind right on out of here. He didn't talk about no TPS for Haitians. Sent them right back to Port-au-Prince. So let, let's, let's go ahead and continue. They say New York City, it say in particular, has struggled to house tens of thousands of migrants, many of them from Venezuela and over 200 hotels, shelters, and tent cities and other facilities. It said our administration and our partners across the city have led calls to let them work. It says, so I want to thank President Biden for hearing our entire coalition, including our hardworking congressional delegation, and taking this important step that would bring hope to thousands of Venezuelan asylum seekers currently in our care who will now be immediately eligible for temporary protected status. That's according to New York Mayor Eric Adams. On Wednesday, the Biden administration has used TPS on an unprecedented scale making record numbers of migrants from Afghanistan, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Haiti, Myanmar, Sudan, and Ukraine eligible for the program. Well, Sister Vicki Dillard did a uh, news piece on African Diaspora News Channel that Biden actually, let me tell you about the Ukrainians, not only he gave them TPS, but he also allowed them to apply for Social Security benefits. Now, me and you have to work till we're almost dead to get Social Security but Ukrainians could just come in this country and get a check. She covered that story. You can go look it up on the African Diaspora News Channel. Sister Vicky showed the receipts of that. Now they said the administration has also kept in place a longstanding TPS programs for El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Nepal. Reversing, listen to this, reversing the Trump administration's efforts to terminate them. TPS has long been criticized by Republicans who argue it's been improperly used to give legal status to migrants, some of whom entered the U.S. illegally for indefinite periods of time, despite its temporary nature. They say the Biden administration, however, has internally resisted at times expanding TPS programs for certain countries, such as Nicaragua, due to concerns about encouraging more migrants to cross the U.S.-Mexico border illegally. They say as a generous immigration announcement. Now they say they was uh, asked, they say about whether they feared the expanded TPS policy could fuel more migration. And the administration officials said they hoped to dissuade Venezuelan migrants from entering the U.S. illegally by setting a cutoff date for the program in July. Yeah, yeah, setting a date gonna really stop people from coming over. Mm-hmm. Sure, right. Let's continue. They said the continuous re residence is a date being at July 31, 2023 makes clear that individuals who arrive after that date will not be eligible for TPS. They said, we're hoping to communicate that clearly according to a senior DHS official requesting um, to be anonymous. They say during a briefing with reporters, say illegal crossings along the Southern border have reached record levels under the Biden administration while they dropped to a two year low in June, unlawful border crossings increased sharply in July and August testing a carrots and stick strategy. The administration unveiled, they said earlier this year with hopes of slowing down the U S bound migration. Let's say the administration announced several additional actions on Wednesday to address the concerns from New York and other cities receiving migrants It said it would expedite the review of work permit requests for migrants who enter the U S at border ports of entry. Is it through a phone app powered system and a program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans with American sponsors. They say the objective official said is to adjudicate those requests within 30 days down from the current 90 day average. They say officials also announced that the DHS will increase the validity period of work permits and say from two to, to five years for many migrants, including asylum seekers, refugees, and green card applicants to move officials at it and say it's designed to cut down on the number of renewal applications and say the agency has to review. Now, there's another article that came with the New York Times. And we're going to review part of that article as well. So Biden has rewarded activity that breaks federal law. But I guess some of you should be happy, right? Because at least he's a Democrat. But you know, y'all had to get Trump out. So you got Trump out 
And now you got half a million people competing for your jobs. And you know who will get the jobs? Them. Because your corporations are greedy for money. Let me tell you something. I have a business. I hire, you know, people. I have staff. And if I was a greedy man, I wouldn't hire a single American either. Why? When you hire Americans, you pay a lot more overhead. You pay federal tax for them, state tax for them, all kind of insurance benefits for them versus if you go hire someone at least overseas, you definitely don't got to pay nothing or you hire one of these people like them that just came over, right? Let's say they can speak enough English enough for you to understand, or you hire somebody who speaks English and Spanish so you can talk to them, whatever, right? You will save so much money. Maybe what they will pay uh, uh, one of you, they can get two of their wor workers, right? This is how these people think in this country. All y'all auto workers right now who's striking for more money. I hope this don't happen, but if you start seeing a bunch of Venezuelans show up, they're going to fire every last one of y'all because y'all don't have a contract. Y'all don't have a contract with them just yet. So Biden doing this around the time y'all striking auto workers should be concerned about this because they'll start shipping them right on over there because you think Ford, and General Motors, you think they really want to pay y'all that money y'all demanding in this in a new contract when they can get them to do it for much of nothing? I'm just telling y'all, y'all really gonna be mad when the Venezuelans go take go in there and get those jobs. But remember, don't get mad at them. Get mad at Biden because he swung the door open in this country. He did it because when Trump was in office, he kept them in Mexico. He wouldn't let them come over here. He was trying to get rid of all that temporary protected status. You remember that. Okay. So just remember who's doing this. Remember, do not, I'm going to read this again. Do not try to go after the immigrants themselves, go after the politicians. They are doing it. Well, that's, but now this article out of the New York times, if you look at the headline there, that's review just part of this because this is very important. Now they say, but several Venezuelans say in New York said, they thought that the word of the work authorization extension would bring more of their countrymen here. Now you see the woman on the screen. That's the one I'm going to be quoting. She says for sure people will come to the U S said, uh, Eli, it said Johanna Carascal. She's 32 years old. It says she owns a small business in San Cristobal, Venezuela, and who now works at a restaurant. He said, there are already people waiting on the borders and they will come to continue to come. He said, you can't live in Venezuela. Now the Jordano is a Negrin, 28 years old hairstylist from Valencia who arrived about three weeks ago and has been staying in a midtown shelter said that more migrants would mean more competition for jobs. She said, I imagine that it would bring many more Venezuelans here to New York. It said, but there are already too many Venezuelans here looking for work. It said, trying to start a new life. Too many Venezuelans, too many Haitians, too many Dominicans. It said, everyone is looking for work. And this change is just going to bring more people. Now I say a Mark, uh, Krikorian is a executive director of the center for immigration studies. It's a think tank. Remember this guy is over a think tank. And them think tanks shape your help shape your policy with your politicians. He says, uh, he said he thinks supporting, uh, the supports curves and so immigration said that the, administration's pattern of granting extensions would prompt many to take their chances at the border. They say, you Venezuelan? He said, there is every reason to believe that you will be included in the next extension of TPS. It's said, 18 months from now. Now, Mayor Eric Adams, they say, who have been pressing the White House for months to, on expanding, it's a work authorization called the decision, an important step that would bring hope to thousands of Venezuelan as asylum seekers currently in our care and who will now be immediately eligible for TPS. Now a Murad our day executive is a director of the New York immigration coalition, which also applauded the Biden administration decision, pointing out that the Venezuelans who have entered the United States in the past two years are only a small fraction of the 7 million who have fled. They fled and say the economically devastated nation during that time. 
And the reason so many people globally are fleeing their home countries, they say it's not because of TPS. They say it's because conditions on the ground in their home countries are so deteriorating so rapidly that they are fleeing for safety. Once again, why aren't the black people in Venezuela fleeing? Why? As I said earlier, either you're lying or the United States is saying, don't let them black folks over here. You better keep them in Colombia somewhere. You better not bring them up here. We don't want them black people. All right. So we want to go through all that to say this, this is what y'all voted for black people. Remember you not, you, you were not black unless you voted for Joe Biden. And many of you were black. Now black folks, Chicago, black folks in New York. Now you got people who's looking for work. They're illegal. They're not illegal at all. They can be here. They will not be deported. So you think work is bad now? Oh, oh, just wait, just wait. They are going to lower than wages so much. Evictions are going to go up for American citizens, definitely for black folk, because if you can't get a job, you can't get anything going for yourself. You can't pay rent. Well, guess what? You got a, a, a street to sleep on. They are, they take it up to shelter. So you couldn't even go to a shelter, but this is what a lot of y'all voted for because that's kind of what it is. Biden and Democrats have never been secretive about their immigration push. Just like they never been secretive about the LGBT. They never been secretive about, you know, anything they're doing. So you can't say, man, they, 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 uh, hoodwinked me. They told me one thing and then they did something else. No, 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 no. They've been on this, but you had to get that Trump out. Then you find out Trump was trying to get them on out of here. TPS, all of them say, Hey, you got to go. And all y'all wanted Trump out. I can't stand Trump. I hate Trump. Okay. You hate him. Fine. Well, open your arms to your new friends in your city. Welcome them in. Say it's great. It's great for you to be here. I hope you get a great job. I don't care if I lose mine because they don't want to pay me. I hope you get the job because you deserve it more than I do. You deserve a job. You left your home. You didn't fight for it. You just left it. You ran, right? I guess y'all should just welcome your new neighbors to the neighborhood. That's it. I'm talking about those who voted Democrat, who voted for the party that pushed this. AOC went to New York. This is last week. You remember we did this last week. They was talking about this and a week later it happened right there in New York. And people screaming and yelling about this. There was a video. I got to cover that one. Now the folks have got involved in Staten Island. They were trying to block the buses from bringing them in. What are you blocking the buses for? Let them in. Oh, now because they're starting to put them in Staten Island, it's a problem. Mayor Adams told you it's coming to a neighborhood near you. It's coming to a borough near you. You thought you thought that it was just gonna go. They was gonna be dropped off where black folks at? Oh no, 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 no. They putting them over there with child too, because remember, y'all are sanctuary city, right? Y'all be inclusive. Don't be uh, xenophobic. Don't do that. That's not the Democrat way. Now, personally, of course, you know, I'm using a lot of sarcasm and all that, of course, but it's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. But what are you going to do to correct it? You want four more years of this? You get, like I said before, get four more years of this. This man, I have a, another 20 million people come in here by the time he get out of office. And he's going to make them all legal. See, it's nothing but a stroke of a pen. He need Congress to do it. He has a legal authority to make every one of them TPS uh, 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 granted. But he won't use his pen to do nothing for black people. <laughs> Those people who are legal now, they didn't vote for Biden. You voted for Biden. You stood in long lines. You were so emotional about getting Trump out. And you thought that Biden was going to have your back. And he did not. You voted for other people from their country, fleeing their country. 
coming to your neighborhood, getting services that you pay for, right? That you can't even get. And now they're about to get the jobs in your community. You voted for Biden and they benefited. Will y'all learn y'all lesson, black folks? Will you learn your lesson when you learn your lesson when you learn your lesson to stop getting emotional when it comes to politics? You need to focus on who is going to do things that's going to benefit me. As I told you before, once you understand that the majority of uh, uh, the systems in America are the straight racist in its core, politicians are racist, everything has racism in it. Once you understand that, it doesn't bother you because you're comfortable within yourself as a black person. Like, I don't care if somebody don't like me. Whatever. Give me what I need. I don't have to go talk to you. I don't have to feed, I don't have to feed you. Give me, uh, just give me what I need. That's it. And y'all have to under, understand the concept of the enemy of my enemy may be my friend. Y'all, but y'all don't understand that concept because you're so freaking emotional and juvenile. I don't like him. I can't stand them. Do you like your family? Do you like to eat? Do you like to have a place to stay? Do you like to have a job? That's the kind of things you need to be thinking about. Not if you like a personality or not. Who cares? But to the new people who has gotten a TPS, um, welcome to America. Um, I hope you get a nice place to stay. I hope you get a job and, uh, you know, be able to take your family on vacations and buy you some new cars and, and uh, live a better life than what you did in uh, Venezuela. I, I hope so. And, and many in the black community support you, obviously, because they voted for Joe Biden and the Democrats. They, they wholesale slaves to Democrats. So clearly they support you, right? Because if they didn't support you, they wouldn't have voted for Biden, right? But to the black American people who are finally getting it. And many, like I say, listen, I'm the type of person better late than never. I don't believe in condemning a person when they finally see the light. I'm just glad to see the light. You understand? And your light has been open. Your eyes has been open. And you say, okay, all right, look, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I got to get them Democrats out. They're hostile. They don't like us clearly. You've seen that last podcast. So what are you going to do about it? This next election has to be a referendum on the Democrat party, not just Joe Biden. It has to be a referendum on the Democrat party for their anti-black policies. Yes, the Republicans have anti-black policies too, but the Republicans aren't out here advocating and pushing half a million people in, in your city. And then remember, they said he granted another 240 some odd thousand um, TPS too. They're dropping all these people off in the cities where you're at. You may not like Trump, fine. But at least that wouldn't happen if he was there. At least your job would be okay. But I could be wrong. Maybe you cool with it. Maybe you feel that you need to sacrifice homelessness lack of job and everything else for the greater good of the Democrat party. Maybe like I said, me personally, they don't, that doesn't fly. That doesn't fly. I'm worrying about my fam, my personal family and make sure they're good. I worry about my community, make sure they're good. I worry about my country, make sure it's good. Cause I'm living here. That affects everything I just talked about. Right? So, I'm not going to support anything that hurts any of those entities I talked about or even hurt my business or the people that work with me. Cause Democrats are horrible for business. They're horrible. They overregulate. They overtax. That's not good for business. Not at all. The regulation and taxes hurt the small business, not the big conglomerates like freaking Walmart. They don't hurt them. They don't even pay no taxes. But people like me will pay more taxes than Walmart will. And I don't make nowhere near the money Walmart makes a quarter. You understand? But let me know what y'all think. Like I said, if I'm wrong and everything I'm saying, let me know in the comments section. You may be cool with uh, your new friends that has been legally, you know, has got legal status. You may be fine with that. But let me know if you're cool with it. 
you know, or whatever, or if you don't like what happened, let, let us know that too. And before I wrap this up, I, I want to put this out here, put out a call. If you are a person that have always voted Democrat, always in every election, even voted for Biden, and you have finally seen the light about what happened, a person in the black community, and you would like, I would like to talk with you, like do an interview with you, you know, like say this, uh, uh, re, re, over the air interview, you know, not nothing where I got to fly out there, but just something like that. I would like to interview you. I actually like to interview black men who feel this way and black women that feel this way. We got it. We got to get both of y'all on here because it's one thing to hear me say it, but it's another when you, you know, say it right. And let the people know what brought you to the point where you said enough is enough with these Democrats because I can't be the only one saying it or those of us who are been saying it, but you know, you can go and, and, and send, send go to African diaspora news.org. Um, send, send me a message, go to that contact form and, and let me know, Hey, I'll be interested in talking about this. You know, I'll try to look in to see who you are, you know, try to attach. It's good for me to see who you are. Actually. I don't like the anonymous things. So if you got a, Facebook page, you got an Instagram. I can kind of look at. I like to see who people are sometimes because we don't want anybody coming around. Um, it's not going to be nothing live. It'll be recorded, pre-recorded because I don't do live anything like that. I like to be, you know, in case somebody have whatever happened, we can edit it out, right? But um, yeah, let let me know. Let me know if you're interested because I would like to start interviewing y'all and let y'all speak. You know, just what brought you to that point. 